Howdy! My name is Kelly Johnson and I work with the PEER program at the College of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences here at Texas A&M University. And we've put together a series of training videos to help you with your educational endeavors. So today, one of our veterinarian technicians here at the vet school, Heather Quarum, is going to talk to you about ultrasounding a horse with her assistant, Braveheart. So this is Braveheart. Braveheart is one of the horses that belongs to us here at the school. As you can see, he's just a tiny bit nervous, so I'm just petting him to reassure him that everything is gonna be all right. As you can see, he's restrained in the stocks. There's a rope across the front, in front of his chest, and then a rope behind his rear so that he can feel that he can't go forward or backwards. He's also tied on his right-hand side with a quick release knot, so that way if he does get too nervous or decides that he needs to leave quickly, he uh, will be able to untie him in no time. Some animals come into the hospital. The hospital is a foreign environment to them. They're a little nervous. They're around people they don't know. On occasion, we do have to sedate them in order to accomplish our exam. This fellow, like I said, he belongs to the school. And so he has been utilized a number of times for this. All the same, he's still a horse. Horses, um, Horses just tend to get a little nervous sometimes, and it's always prudent to use caution when you're working around them. Don't get too comfortable. Always make sure that he knows where you are. One of the most common ailments that we utilize ultrasound for is colic. Colic is a very broadly used term. Um, what, how we describe it as any kind of discomfort in the abdomen of the horse. What we can utilize ultrasound for is determining does this, is this horse uncomfortable in his abdomen because he has a nephrosplenic entrapment, which is when your colon gets stuck between your kidney and your spleen. And by putting the transducer right here, we can tell right away whether there is not a nephrosplenic entrapment. So you can rule that out. Some other things that might fall under the colic umbrella include rolling, laying down, not feeling right, biting at their sides. Those are more overt signs of colic. Something more subtle might include a poor appetite. They don't eat as well as they used to. They're lethargic. They just don't feel right. Anything that falls outside of their normal behavior and their normal character. Those are things that you would like to take your animal in to have your vet evaluate for. Up here, you can evaluate the health of your, or the sonographic health of your spleen and your liver. You can look at your stomach. Say your horse has gone off their food, they're not eating well, it's been going on for a while. We can look, we can evaluate a good portion of the stomach on the left side of the abdomen to perhaps look for a mass in the wall of the stomach. We can also evaluate a large portion of the small intestine and the colon to see if perhaps the colon wall is thick, maybe it's twisted and it's not healthy, it's not getting a good blood supply. Um, perhaps the small intestine is blocked and food is not able to pass through the small intestine. We can see a fair amount of that on the ventral abdomen and in the inguinal area. There are a number of things that you can utilize ultrasound for to try to evaluate the health of the abdomen in general, keeping in mind the, the unfortunately, the ultrasound, the sound waves that are produced by the ultrasound machine cannot penetrate gas. And horses create quite a bit of gas in their GI tract. And so as wonderful as I think ultrasound is, we're limited in how much of the abdomen we can see because of the amount of gas in the colon and in the GI tract. A large part of my responsibility is teaching the third and fourth year veterinary students. As you can see, this fellow has some windows clipped on his abdomen from an ultrasound lab that we did a few weeks ago. So what I'm gonna do this morning is touch up these areas in order to get a good diagnostic ultrasound image 
your patient has to be prepped appropriately and that as well is a large portion of my job, one of my largest responsibilities. So I'm going to clip this window right here. Hair traps air and air is air blocks ultrasound waves that are created that by this machine. So hey there handsome. I'm just going to get this region trimmed up. This particular window that I'm clipping has his left kidney, his spleen, small colon, and large colon in it. One of the best diagnostic images that you get from this window is you can rule out a nephrosplenic entrapment which is a fairly common cause of colic in horses. So the hair is gone. I'm going to rinse off the loose hair, the dirt, and the dander. And this is nice warm water, by the way. Just like us, if you use cold water, their skin tightens up, which makes them more difficult to image. So I'm going to wipe off the excess water. This is ultrasound gel. You have to have some kind of coupling agent to allow the sound waves that are created by the machine to pass through that tiny thin layer of air between the transducer and your patient. So that's what the gel is for. Hey, handsome. And when I'm preparing him, I'm applying the gel in the direction of the hair to avoid trapping even the tiniest particles of air underneath the remaining hair. For this part of the examination, we'll use the macro convex transducer. It offers us the lowest frequency in order to penetrate the deep abdomen of the horse. So we'll put it on our patient and adjust our image appropriately. And now we can image his kidney, his spleen, and his small colon. So in this window that we prepped earlier, we can see kidney. I'm going to let him know I'm coming so I don't startle him. Kidney, spleen, large colon, and small colon, deep to that. And then again, the nice thing about this window is you can rule out a nephrosplenic entrapment as long as you can see the kidney. This is an excellent non-invasive diagnostic tool that you can use on a horse that's uncomfortable, a horse that's a bit colicky. And you can also see a good portion of your spleen so you can evaluate the overall health of your spleen at this point. If you come further, a little bit more cranial and ventral, I've prepped another window exactly the way I prepped this one. So in this more cranial ventral window that I've clipped and prepped just like the more caudal window, this is my favorite window personally. In this one you can see stomach, ventral lung, diaphragm, liver, spleen, and colon. And ideally you really want to evaluate all the structures in this window, particularly your liver spleen interface. Oh, beautiful. There should be a nice difference in the echogenicity of your liver and your spleen in this window. And this is the only area in the horse's body that you can see those two structures right up next to one another. When you're talking about ultrasound, there are a number of terms that you need to be familiar with to make utilizing ultrasound easier. Sonographers are people who are specifically trained in the use of ultrasound to obtain diagnostic images. Echogenicity 
is how bright or dark is your image. So when you look on this screen, this curved line right here is very, very bright and it's very white. That means it is extremely echogenic or hyper echoic. This area here that's dark as well as that dark rim right through there, that image has more fluid in it and that image is less echogenic or hypo echoic. This bright curve, this bright white curve right here, that is actually his stomach and the reason it's so bright is because his stomach has gas in it. If you recall, when you're prepping your patient, you want to try to minimize as much air that is between your transducer and your patient's body as possible because even the tiniest bit of air in here will make it impossible for the sound waves to get into your animal's body. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. You'll notice his distal leg is clipped he was utilized for an ultrasound lab and we had clipped the hair on his leg but I'm touching his leg all the way down so that he knows at all times where I am. This is an area that we have to sedate a number of our patients for. As you can imagine, I'm kneeling very close to the floor right underneath his feet and it's, it's always a good idea to be cautious. When you're doing a distal limb, it's all right, handsome. When you're doing a distal limb, you always need someone at the head of your horse to make sure they're watching what your horse is doing and that you're safe and in an, as, as controlled of an environment as is possible. So again, a large portion of what we do here in ultrasound is the distal limbs of athletes, rainers, cutters, rodeo horses, hunter jumpers, uh, dressage horses. They use their legs a lot, they drop their feet a lot, and so we spend a lot of time working on their distal limbs. Because the structures that we want to look at are considerably more superficial or closer to the skin than anything we want to see in the abdomen, we're going to change transducers. This is a straight linear. It's a much higher frequency than the one we used for the abdomen. And Miss Michelle is standing at Braveheart's head. Whenever you're going to work, lower down on the horse or put yourself in a potentially dangerous position, you always need to have someone with you making sure or doing your best to be as safe as possible. Hey, handsome. And I'm gonna let him know where I am so I don't startle him. I'm gonna put my hand down his leg, put the transducer on his leg, and then I can get my image. These are the palmar structures of his left front limb. If you can appreciate as well, he's clipped here right behind his jaw. The ultrasound service offers a number of different body structure exams. The most common one we do is colics. That's why we have these different windows clipped to teach students the different areas that you might want to look at in a horse that's colicking. We do a lot of athletes, rainers, cutters, jumpers. That's why his distal limb is clipped. A lot of horses that are athletic like that damage the tendons. Hey, handsome. They damage the tendons on the back side of their legs and so we use ultrasound to evaluate the health of those tendons and ligaments. This window here that's clipped, not only can you see his jugular vein, you can see his carotid artery, you can also see his esophagus, his trachea, and right here you can see thyroid and salivary gland. So you can see a number of structures with ultrasound and ultrasound again is completely non-invasive. It causes no, there are no harmful side effects. It's completely painless. When you're 
Determining how best to optimize your ultrasound image for your patient, a key thing to keep in mind is everyone has heard the person down the block with the souped up radio in their car. You always hear the bass first versus the treble because bass travels further. Bass is a low frequency sound wave and it'll go further into, it travels further through the air and it'll travel further through the horse's abdomen. So whenever we're imaging these areas on the horse, we're gonna use a low frequency transducer. So the sound waves that are coming out of the car are a totally different frequency than the sound waves that are coming out of this machine. Even though they are low frequency, the tiniest bit of air will completely impede our image. So if you recall, when we were prepping this site on the horse, I tried to clip as much of the hair off as I could. I also tried to remove as much of the debris and dander from the skin. And you can see there's still ultrasound gel on him because the sound waves cannot penetrate air. That's the same problem that we have in the actual, hey handsome, in the actual abdomen of the horse. They are hind gut fermenters. They create quite a bit of gas in their GI tract. So that gas, that air inside their GI tract is just as much of an impediment to the sound waves as air right here between your, your transducer and the patient's body. Well, we hope you enjoyed that video. And on behalf of the entire peer team, we wish you the best of luck with your educational endeavors. Don't forget to check out our website at peer.tamu.edu for other training videos and free resources. Thanks again, and we hope to see you soon.